I've found myself increasingly plugged in over the years, and I can feel it tapping my vitality. I can feel that my mind isn't always as sharp. My focus is waning, and sometimes I feel that my mind is nothing more than a dull implement. I remember the days of my childhood when I could read books for 12 hours a day and travel to distant lands right from the comfort of my own bedroom reading nook. I remember being able to be absorbed in the moment fully, delighting in small things. Of course, my senses can still perceive these things, but I feel as if a veil is sometimes covering me, blocking me from being able to be present in the beauty of everyday moments, blocking me from being able to focus on what I'm reading, and oftentimes hampering my ability to think and write. It is technology use, as well as the side effects of our modern, industrialized world that is the culprit. I recently read a book called The Shallows by Nicholas Carr. In the book, he said, Once I was a scuba diver in the sea of words. Now I zip along the surface like a guy on a jet ski. I feel the same way. The modern world has brought us so many new opportunities to learn, connect, and share. I wouldn't be able to speak to you right now without the technology of the modern world. However, I do feel that it comes with a cost to our minds and also to our hearts, to our creativity and even our relationships. The more plugged in we are, the more we become impersonal, semi-cyborgs, using our devices as a robotic extension of our minds. The problem is, our mind is not a robot. It is an organic living thing, and therefore it is not by nature compatible with our devices. When we plug into our cyborg extensions, we are using immense amounts of energy and human vitality that would otherwise, in earlier eras, be used in making human connection, creativity, and simple everyday tasks. Our minds were not made to be able to digest and absorb all of this information and the complex data streams that are now scrolling before our eyes for so many hours a day. After so many years of urban living and being bombarded with advertisements, social media, and tech, I am now reaching towards a life that is simpler. I've heard a term called analog life that is a kind of trendy subculture in South Korea. There are many people, not just me, that feel the weight of the modern world and are taking solace in simpler ways of living. Followers of the analog lifestyle find the simple use of ticking clocks, pen and paper, to be wondrous and romantic. Finding shelter in the ways of the past has become a way to almost heal the mind, to detox it from our fast-paced world. While the modern world offers us a faster-paced, productive, convenient life, it is also oftentimes simultaneously rejecting the sacred, the magic, and the meaning. Cut off from our eternal relationship with divinity and our true nature, we are left to our own devices. And I say that both figuratively and literally. I think that it is no coincidence that some of the most cherished and celebrated movies and recent television shows are period pieces, where we get an experience vicariously, of course, of a more natural way of living. 
Many of these period pieces are set in rural settings and harken back to a time where simplicity, duty, and a connection with nature, as well as the sacred, were the essential ingredients of everyday life. What we crave as human beings is depth, meaning, and connection, and I truly believe that technology, when not handled properly, erodes these things. I am afraid of living a shallow life, where my life exists from a screen to screen, without embracing the richness of the natural world or the magic of seemingly mundane tasks. Recently, I began putting limits on my technology use and have reserved it for only very specific periods of the day. It has been refreshing and given me a renewed sense of vitality, presence, and intention. I feel that an antidote to this tech overload lies in embracing a more analog lifestyle. With the pressure of today's world and our addiction to technology, we often miss out on life. I remember I was watching a documentary about the slow food movement a few years ago, and I remember one profound moment when the cook being interviewed mentioned that so much time every day she chops garlic, and that so many people these days will buy pre-chopped or jarred garlic or a garlic paste or something like that, but she says all this convenience, it lies to us because it says, here, here's this pre-chopped ingredient so you can go and live your life. But then she said, the problem is that having this extra time to quote, live life, often means more time to waste time on our phones. But real life is chopping the garlic. We need to let our minds and hearts rest. For me, I'm able to do this when I walk in nature, become mindfully engaged in my cooking, cleaning, journaling, One of the most powerful habits I've adopted is to take my phone and put it in another room in the mornings, only opening it about 9am once I've finished my meditation, yoga, journaling, and reading. And in the early evenings after I turn my computer off, I relish folding the laundry with the window open, working on my crochet projects, and then going out for a walk. I believe there is great power in adopting a more analog lifestyle and that it helps us to heal our overworked minds, to be present in the magic of everyday life, and also to approach our life with intention and alignment with our highest values and ideals. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. This idea of analog life is something that's really been on my mind lately, especially now that I am living outside of the temple. When I was living in the temple, it created a kind of structure that made it easy to not always be on devices because I was, you know, very busy. While I am still busy, there is a little bit less structure living in my own home and it's now really up to me to provide that structure. So I'm having to really kind of figure all this stuff out, it feels like, from scratch and really be a little more intentional about how I spend my time. So making this video also really helped me to clarify my intentions around tech use and my lifestyle and how I want to be spending my precious time. For all of us, our time is very precious and I think that, you know, embracing maybe a more analog life is a great way to connect to yourself and to connect with your higher ideals. So thanks again for watching and I would love to hear from you down below in the comments with any of your digital detox tips and tricks that you've learned or really any thoughts or reflections from what I shared today. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye!